Hey guys, Mike Kudner from the Rocky Files. Stacy and I are going to be with you in just a second. Before we start, I'm going to play this little video of Sly talking about standing up for yourself and fighting back. It's something he did last December, and it's very appropriate for what's happening now. Sly did a post about, on an Instagram, three posts that were pretty intense about acquiring the rights to Rocky. It's a very long story, and many of you know it. I'm not going to talk about it here. We talk about it later in the show. But we reference you to go back and see this. Well, they're no longer there for you to see. But we talk about it in length. You can actually Google Sylvester Stallone writes Rocky. Just Google that. You'll get 100 articles that popped up in the last 48 hours. I'm playing this video that Sly talked about for all of us last December because standing up for yourself when other people say, hmm, Maybe you should just be thankful. Just move along. Nothing to see here. What's done is done. In some instances, sure. You, I get that. Yeah, I've had to do that. But there's other instances. If something eats at your soul for decades, if there was a great immoral conflict happening and, and you your hands are so tied, there's not much you can do about it. Sometimes the best way to go about it is putting it out there. And that's what Sly did. He just put it out there. I, for one, am very proud of Sylvester Stallone. And I will always be Team Sly, as is my co-host Stacy. So watch what Sly has to say. Then tune in for a great Rocky Files. Keep punching. I don't like to argue. I don't like stress. I don't like conflict. But sometimes... You have to face the conflict and the stress and the source of that and get it out of the way. Don't keep it inside. Somehow you have to purge yourself of this thing that's eating you alive. There's different ways of doing it, getting it to someone's grill, or you start to use your head and work your way around the problem without offending anyone, but you're getting your point across. But sometimes you just have to offend someone who's offending you. That's fair. And it takes courage. Actually, it takes courage to do a lot of things. It takes a lot of guts to stay in school. It's courage. It takes courage to get up every morning in bravery and pushing yourself when you don't want to, to go to work, to supply food for yourself and your family. It takes courage to stick your head above the crowd and voice your own opinion, even though it's not a popular one, but it's one that you feel is so deep in your soul that you have to get it out. You can't go through life living on lies. Quite often, you just have to stand up and grab life by the throat and not let go until you succeed. Courage. You all have it. It's just pushing the right button. Keep punching. I really do. <sighs> Stacy, Michael, how hello, are my you? friend. 
Oh, I am so good, and I am so beyond excited that I am back doing this with you. I missed Yay! the last week. I know. What a crazy week. Just so people know what how yeah. hard we work on yeah. this. You, okay? how are you work? <laughs> I know. But you work. You're, I mean, your tour schedule, you said, is crazy right now. It's, it's been very right volatile. Right. Very, so, very, yes, yes. So you have these windows here, there, and everywhere, and we yeah. settled on a window five people from last week five people just were not available in that window so finally we have one of those five people in this window (laughs) coming at us so (laughs) i'm really excited about that but let's let's take a look at this for just a moment let's just analyze this (laughs) do these people know what they're passing up (laughs) we have 200 followers every (laughs) thursday do they know the platform yeah, we stand Don't you know on. who I am? <laughs> Don't you know who I am? Hello? <laughs> Do you blame? I don't blame them. Oh, the Rocky Files. Yeah, okay. I'll get there, guys. I'll but get there. I'll get there. You're just a little basement podcast. No, nobody. we are up to almost four, 500 followers on YouTube. And we're oh, that's great. this shy of 1,800 followers on Instagram. So there. I can't <laughs> believe it. I, I really, I, I really, I, I'm so, I'm just yeah. so proud. But again, I say I'm a broken record. I say this every week. I show up with some stories and an odd sense of humor and looking at life. <laughs> You guys really do have to understand the time and work Stacy puts into this. So I, I, she gets a little embarrassed when I talk about it, but really she could go do another Rocky podcast and be fine. <laughs> I couldn't. Oh, I can't upload. I can't sweet. record. I can only do lives on Instagram. Okay. <laughs> Anything beyond that, I'm screwed. So again. When you all send in well wishes, they generally go right to Stacy because oh. I know I know my place in the equation. Right? <laughs> Thanks. No, well, everything I've uh, learned, I've uh, <laughs> either learned from my daughter or on YouTube. You can go to college on YouTube these days. <laughs> That seems like an awful lot of work to me. So I think I'll just, as long as you're happy with the current arrangement, I'm going to let you just take the lead and be the boss. And then I am. Yeah, from there. it's good. Uh, no, we're having fun. Um, so 43, I wanted mm, to show off my t-shirt. This was I a love gift, that. And it, it says Rocky Balboa and 43. This was a gift to me before Sly Stallone shop, FYI. Uh, so <laughs> just to put that out there. And we thought we would talk about the number 43 beyond four plus three equals seven. Right. That is that. Uh, that was my line. <laughs> You got me. I still okay. Let's start over. No. What about the number forty-three, Michael? You know, if you change four and three, if you put the three before the four, you do get seven. And if you minus three from four, you get one, which is like seventeen. So that's great. Right. Where are we going? I don't know. <laughs> but I think you definitely have the lead on that. It takes how many muscles to frown? Hmm. I I'm thinking the writing is on the wall for the answer with this because of the episode. I'm going to go with 43. You are correct. If we, many... could, if we could just play the Rocky music right now. <laughs> it's like, I've done it. No, that, that really, it's incredible. But 43 yeah. muscles, really. Yes, to frown, but that. only how many to smile? Only how many to smile? I, we just went over this. So I think what, it was like 27. 10. 10. Only 10. 10 muscles to smile. How about yeah. that? So mm-hmm. when we talk about frown lines, the older we get, don't frown. Right. That's the, smile, you'll get less lines in your face. Right. You're going to you're going to get lines, but you'll get less lines. Right. Right. Stacy, we had a uh, death in the family this week. Uh today oh. actually. Yeah, it's kind of sad. Uh my hair died today. Uh <laughs> I don't know what is happening, but I look like I'm 14 going to like a Holy Communion or something. I've got this weird part here. It's got a greasy Mm. thing going on. I I, I feel like Michael Corleone, the way Pacino had his hair done. And I I don't know what's I do know what's happening. It's a work hazard. OSHA. Mm. What the, what you don't know about the Rocky hat is that it is uh, written under OSHA law. It will damage your head, uh, your hair. (laughs) So it's very hot. It's like 94 degrees today and it's muggy outside and I'm just sweating. Mm. So my hair looked so nice when I entered my van to leave the house to go to Philly for the tour. And then when I got there, 
this happened. I, I, I don't know. So I got to wear my hat during the tour. I thought I could hide my ugly, hellacious head. And so at the end of the tour, I took my hat off and I had like, you know, people screaming on the street of Philadelphia. Go put the creature away. What is that? Oh, God. It was horrible. So I apologize for my horrible head. You fixed it though. It was a little crazy when you first got on, but was, he was like, he ooh, ran away and wet it, it down. Bad. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. I we we're next door to the fire company, so I had them hook up the hoses at the corner, and they just sprayed me down like that scene in First Blood, and they just <laughs> hit me with the hoses. And that's it, man. Because Jesus, yikes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Listen, before we move on, you have had a bit of a reunion yes. with your husband, I and did. I got to tell you. Those pictures were adorable. You thank guys are you. a beautiful couple. Oh, thank you. We were so excited. Yeah, it was it was a I long bet. wait. It was a, you know, it took about double the time. We thought maybe he'd have to wrap up up there for a month, six weeks, and and it just took so much longer. And then this territory needing him, it was a little more delayed than we thought. So it's been eight weeks. Right, so it's right, just right. like, oh, when he finally got here. And so I just posted away. Because, I mean, people message me, how are you? Oh, yeah, has been there yet. Right. You know, it's so cute. You know, I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna throw it up there. And so, yeah. So yeah, I have. Our, I'll put it in on my, our picture right here. <laughs> I, yeah, put it right here. So in my mind, I have one of two images I could go with the two of you at this moment. One, your husband's walking okay. in the door. You've got a visor with a clear plastic green tint on it. Okay. You've got a big stogie. Your feet are up. You've got poker <laughs> chips, pretzels, cards, beer cans laying all over. Oh, you finally made it? Yeah. Or <laughs> I go the other way where you're all done up very nice. The hair is done. Glasses have little yes. bows on it. You've got some nice, you know, clothing on appropriate bottle yeah. of wine or champagne, <laughs> which which is closer yeah. to the truth here. Yeah, the latter. <laughs> okay. Sure. No poker. No, I was following you. He, no, he was he was texting me 300 miles to go, 200 uh, miles to go, 100 miles uh, to go. And so I have, you know, our location on. So I was in the right. driveway when he came in and my parents were with me. So it was fun. It was fun. Yeah, <laughs> that's so, great. No, that, that's and, and the reunion with your parents and your husband, that was all good. Oh, yeah. No, it was good. great. It was great. You know, and we've we've settled in. But, you know, it's like. It almost, I said, I was talking to my parents. It's like, it's like, we're not really here yet until he's yeah, here, you know, and so now it, now it feels complete. And so now yeah, oh, it's great. really nice. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I know a lot of the people that watch are very excited that you guys are back together because anytime you go from a quad to a tricycle, you know, it's, it's <laughs> difficult. Doesn't <laughs> it doesn't work. It's like you're limping along and then, okay, let's get back all four wheels. Right. I understand that. So right. no, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad. Yeah. Well, uh, did you guys go out and do anything yet? Have you been out, out and about together since you've been in the new house uh, or not yet? Yeah. So he, he got here and he was exhausted. And so mm. he was, he fell asleep. He slept that evening. He like, Oh wow. Fell asleep. Then, um, actually, yeah. When he very, very first got here, we went out to dinner. He loves a longhorn. So we went to dinner Ooh, me too. and so Ooh. he had a big steak and then that put him in a post food coma. So oh. <laughs> he fell oh, asleep. Yeah. Yes. oh yeah. yeah because yeah. you, you go in like the Virgin Mary and you come out <laughs> six months pregnant. <laughs> It's so true. It's so true. Yeah. And so, uh, no, it was, it was, it's great. And so then yesterday we, we, you know, we unpacked his car and we put all that away because he had a bunch of uh, stuff in his car. And then we just hung out with my parents a little bit. We just want, he just wanted to hang out in the house. Yeah, you know what right. I mean? It's like new, new house, big right? beautiful house. Absolutely. Yeah. So, exactly. so I guess yeah. we should talk about something that mm. has been really burning up the airwaves in Hollywood and yeah. uh, the Stallone uh, community fan sites. Yes. So I don't know how much people are aware in 1975 when Sylvester Stallone wrote Rocky in, because he was an unknown actor, he had to sell the rights to Rocky to MGM. They had to, they said, we're going to put money on you. We don't think the movie is going to take off but if it mm -hmm. does we want we're going to we're going to take the risk if it fails so we should garner the biggest rewards should it succeed yeah. and boy succeed did it ever mm 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and and yes, Sly will be the first to tell you he has been compensated uh, over the years. Of course, he has been. He's gotten royalties and uh, uh, multi million dollar paychecks. But over the years, specifically around Rocky Three, Sly had a real heart to heart with the people that bought the property from him. And he said, listen, he goes, I understand. I'm not going to get all the rights back. I get that. I'm like, Rocky is like the golden goose. Okay. I get right. it. But I'd like something to pass on to my children. Mm-hmm. And they said, no, right. you get nothing. You get, you get your paycheck and your points and that's it. And that's a very difficult pill to swallow. And I thought about this for a long time. Mm-hmm. Now, Stallone has talked about this. There's a great article in, uh, what is it? Vanity, no, variety, variety. Um, it's uh, variety, uh, yeah, yeah, variety. Sly goes, it's about three or four years ago. Sly's on the cover, and it's a picture of him punching, and he goes into mm-hmm. significant detail about uh, what happened and how he mm-hmm. felt he was wrong. And uh, the last three days or four days, Sly has been incredibly vocal about this. And what is so extreme about this is that we've never seen Sly in his entire career be outspoken like this. Even in during Rocky Balboa, when he was trying to get that made and they were blocking it, he mm. he was very professional about yeah. his. I remember him. He was on <clears throat> Bill O'Reilly and he was on Larry King and several other shows where he was pleading his case to the fans. He was yeah. trying to let them know that. He's not the one. It, it's not him. It's other people who either don't believe in him or are just plain old greedy. And it wasn't even so much MGM. It was a producer who Sly has posted <laughs> this. I've had conversations with Sly about this. It was a producer who in 1977 used Sylvester Stallone's own lawyer against him. Now, I, this, I always thought something like that is illegal and that should be thrown out. But I, I don't think a, a, a lawyer could represent two people. But it was all done stabbing in the back way. And, mm-hmm. and, and this is something that has eaten at Sly all these years. Mm-hmm. And I, I just wonder, I, I don't want to, I'm not going to read what Sly wrote. I'm not going to post the pictures what Sly uh, posted. I, I, I don't know that this is the right forum for that. Stacy, before we go any further and I read to you some things Sly wrote me, what's your thoughts on this? Well, it, it's when I first saw the post, I, it was so visceral that I was like, what? You know, and I, I mean, I agree with him 1000 percent. What was done to him was beyond unfair. Yeah. But to see him post in this st- this style in this way to me points to, like you said, this has been going on for over four decades. It's so obviously unfair it's laughable and then something you just said uh, doesn't conflict of interest I, I mean i would love to be the one that thinks of some angle that would help him out but you yep. know the whole conflict of interest with his lawyer doesn't that count for anything and the other thing is the laws I, and you and i discussed this but it's like there are more laws protecting writers now than there was back then and i know he signed the contract back then yeah but does that mean he he doesn't doesn't have rights to the, what the laws are now, at least yeah. from this day forward? I don't know. I don't know all that stuff. But to see him post that upset makes me very upset because that's not his style. And that right. just points to something that is obviously very seriously unfair. And I, I don't know. I just think... Uh, <laughs> What's the point? Like, how much does he really want? Is he asking for like one percent? And and you know, when he when the producer's family inherits whatever they no, inherit, right, are they right. really going to live without an extra one percent that you could give to Sly? Because oh, yeah. by the way, you wouldn't have anything if Sly didn't write it or come to you. Agreed. I'm sorry. I know you took the risk. I know you took the risk, but it wouldn't even exist if Sly didn't write it. I mean, something. It's so obvious what needs to be done. No wonder he's pissed off. I know it's called. Agreed. I know it's called show business, not show Mm. friendship. I get that. All right. That's fine. And I, I know Sly understands that. He understands that better than anybody. Right. But there's a morality thing here. And when I, when I think of Rocky, 
there is something so profoundly beautiful about this character that appeals universally to every single person that comes in contact with Rocky, whether it be um, a uh, whether it's the movie, whether it's a clip on YouTube, whether it's a Rocky tour, a book or a podcast about Rocky. This is something that I feel appeals to the inner nature of all of us. We can find something that we can hold on to quite deeply. And it really hurts. It hurts me when I go to certain fan stone sites. Um, there's one in particular that, that yeah. I'm thinking of right now that really aggravates me when I see what people write. Um, there's some people there that are very much against what Sly has been saying and doing. And uh, and I tried to mm -hmm. chastise them a little bit and I realized how futile that was. So I just said, uh, OK, I'm um, mm what they're yeah. going to say what they're going to say i can't change their minds right. for me um this is a conversation i've been having with sly for many many months now um before he made it really well known he had been writing me asking me to talk about this on the podcast and and i wanted to but i didn't know i didn't know how to I, I didn't have that type of skill i didn't know how to bring it forward in a way where it didn't seem like i was i don't know i wanted to be fair but right. in, in this circumstance, I don't know how I can be anything other than on, on Sly's side. So right. Sly, Sly had sent me some things that he he requested I read on the podcast. And I, I thought I would I would read some of them now, um, if you don't mind. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. OK, so here it goes. I'll give you a fact in all six Rockies combined. And I maybe saw him in a 40 year span maybe on the set between eight and 10 times. He truly produced nothing. This is the producer we're, we're discussing. This is the producer Sylvester has Instagrammed on that he's very, very angry with. Just check out his track record. He had made somewhere in the vicinity of 25 bombs before Rocky. He was on the verge of being thrown out of Hollywood. The films he made after Rocky, such as New York, New York, Nickelodeon, Valentino, and on and on, were additional bombs. He takes credit for Scorsese films, but Marty throws in the phone for sticking with him. Not exactly sure what that means, but I, I think he's saying Marty supports Irwin, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, when, in fact, it was Rocky's box office proceeds that saved all of these projects, right. which, which is true. Mm -hmm. I was around when Raging Bull was made. As usual, he was never on the set, and Rocky, again, was cross-collateralized and compensated for the money that Raging Bull lost. Now, let's just stop for a second. I went back and looked at some numbers on, I was like, Raging Bull was not that great monetarily. Mm. It's a tour de force of De Niro's acting. It really is. Right. Well, for whatever reason. It didn't do the business that Rocky did. Right. And Rocky had to cover these losses. Yeah. Likewise, New York, New York, which at the time lost a fortune. And I believe Liza Minnelli was in that. Rocky has paid for all of his subsequent bombs. Actually, in retrospect, his biography, his biography should have been called Bombs Away. Yeah. Uh, this producer has a biography out where he does detail in the stereotypical standard story that we've all heard. Uh, how he, <clears throat> excuse me, how he um, gave the green light to Stallone mm -hmm. for Rocky, how he and uh, Bob Chartoff, the other mm -hmm. producer, who is a, was a very good man. His yeah. children, they're good people. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob Chartoff was, and, and the other producer, they put their houses on the line for a completion bond for Rocky, uh, whether it had to do with insurance or extra money or whatever the case may be. And and again, I know Sly was very grateful, especially at the time for that. Go and Google who he is talking about. You will see over the decades, many pictures of uh, Sly with this producer on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, at birthday cakes, at celebrations, at red carpets and so on. And Sly was still aggravated and frustrated with him. But Sly always tried to keep a dialogue open. He always tried to be respectful. He always tried to take the higher road because that is Sly's nature. That is who he is. He, he does not want to go where he went now, but he feels his back is against the wall and he has nowhere left to turn. And he really wants to get some of the rights from Rocky to kind of mm -hmm. pass them on to his children. And, and mm -hmm. I understand that. Absolutely. I, I, yeah. Sure, I get that. 
Yeah. Okay. So I had a bunch of responses to Sly. And uh, now I have uh, uh, another thing. Um, this is this is a little tricky to read. So bear with me as I skip over some words from time to time. Sure. Um, I had asked. I had asked why this producer had agreed to do Rocky Balboa. And Sly told me it was simple greed yeah. across the board. It was all about money. Joe Roth, and I think I told this story earlier on a podcast. Joe Roth was the one who brokered the deal for Rocky Balboa uh, because nobody wanted to hear anything from Stallone. And that was, of course, because of this personal vindictive nature that this producer had. Mm -hmm. So uh, they make it happen because the producer was able to dispatch his son to the set of Rocky Balboa, and he was literally attached to Sly's side like a high lord executioner. <laughs> and Sly, Sly had described this to me in great detail, and I, I'm going to go into it here shortly. Well, you know what? Let me just start reading. Okay, uh, so we're talking about Rocky Balboa, Sly's words. The movie is being made for pennies. Absolutely no one wants to do it. It's only Joe that's keeping it in the ball game. And he is not even with MGM or United Artist. Joe uh, was with Revolution Studios, Revolutionary Studios at the time. But without him, it's a no-go. The only reason the producer signed on is because, as I stated before, it was free money. Anyway, he stuck his two sons, A and B, as producers. One was more inept than the other. A would sit next to me and tell me how he thinks Rocky should speak and how Rocky would react. And I had to remind this fool that I am basically Rocky and what? I know how he thinks and would react. Oh, they God. made him sit next to me the entire shoot. I was on very thin ice, so I could not say anything. He would sit there with us with this skin tight headgear and black hood on because it was freezing in philadelphia but he did resemble this ugly high lord executioner so while i'm trying to direct and doing rewrites on the spot he would be sitting next to me with his laptop writing his own screenplay and quoting out dialogue from the project could you imagine oh Sylvester Stallone God. has sly has very little budget he has got to get these shots Bang, yeah. bang, bang. Yeah, no time. He's got no time. Yeah. I'm on set. I'm like a church mouse off to the side in the inside the Victor Cafe. I'm watching. Yeah. I'm watching Sly's stress levels rise and fall. And I'm watching mm -hmm. him control himself. But I can there is just an air of stress yeah. around everyone. You can feel it. Yeah. You you could just feel it. And I had no idea this was going on in 2006. It's sickening to me. Mm. Okay. So uh, his own screenplay quoting out dialogue from the project. I would have to tell him to shut up or I would remove him. Even if I do get fired, I especially came to a head that it especially came to a head that night. I was with little Marie and I defended her on in front of the bar when she was being mocked. But the most horrendous story is the one with Antonio Tarver. Mm. We, we had agreed to pay him a vested sum in comparison to what Carl Weathers got. It was quite lucrative. Producer's son had one job to get done, and that was to get Tarver to sign a contract. That was the only requirement the the producer's son had to do. Mm -hmm. Nepotism, okay, a little bit. <laughs> he had at least three or four months to do this simple task. That was his only job. Anyway, he he didn't do it, and I got a call from Tarver the next night. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I got a Carver. For, I got a call from Tarver the night before the fight, saying he wants a raise. I said that's impossible. He says he'll quit. I said you signed a contract. You can't quit. He said no one ever presented a contract. I almost <laughs> lost my mind. We are less than 48 hours away from the most difficult movie miracle I ever had to pull off, and my opponent is quitting. I said, what do you want? Hmm. Tarver said, I want $4 million. I got physically nauseous. I went to 
the producer mm -hmm. that is controlling all of this, the father, and said, your son really messed up. The producer yelled, that's none of your business or mine. I should deal with it. I asked if he would put up some money. Of course, he refused. I would. I went to United Artists. They wouldn't put up any more. They wouldn't put up any more. The same thing with, with MGM. They suggested I cancel Rocky Balboa. Cancel Rocky Balboa. <laughs> I can't even I can't uh, even fathom this concept of canceling Rocky. Right. Right. I, I, I just I, uh, I, it gets me so mad to think of all the bombs that the Rocky series had, uh, you know, yeah, covered for those right. losses that he funded. Rocky has funded all these bombs to make up for all those losses. And and you can't come up with them a little bit of money to keep Tarver happy. Yeah. Like I, I, Sly is owed that a hundred times. Yeah. And to think that, Oh, they no problem using the Rocky money to cover their bombs, but you know, we're not, we're not going to help you out here. Oh my God. The problem that I have in my mind is I have a very difficult time separating Rocky from the reality of the show business world. I think because of the beautiful nature of the character of Rocky, I think because of how much this character has given me, and continues to give me right. what this character taught me every day of my life for the last 40 years that someone could attach something ugly to it. And that's what these producers, this producer did. He attached something so horribly ugly. It didn't have to be this way. Why not just say to Sly, you know what, Sly, you're right. Without all your hard work, and I'm going to get into that a little bit more, without all your hard work, Without your concept of Rocky, without your directorial skills over the years, without your writing, I wouldn't have what I have. Exactly. My children wouldn't have what they have. So here, here's 25%, 30%. You're telling me, taking a controlling share, 70% of the, the rights are Rocky, are you telling me that they're going to go into the poorhouse? Right. It, exactly. It's so... This would have been something Sly could have given to his children. Mm -hmm. But no, they, there there has to be this intense egotistical pull. This well, you signed a contract, you were paid. That's it. Yeah, okay. Technically, yes, you're right. That that was the deal. Okay, but you took advantage of a a very naive young man, a very mm -hmm. naive actor who was ready. He just wanted to get his story out there, to get his shot out there, right. and and how they don't come back to that is is, is really troublesome to me. Okay, right, right. <sighs> This film, I felt with combination of my life's work, it was going against the most overwhelming negative tide I had ever incurred. Everyone considered me over the hill in Rocky Pazé. Could you imagine? <laughs> Sylvester Stallone Doesn't over compute. the hill. Yeah. It's, I, I, I don't understand. He's only 60. He's 59 yeah. and three quarter at the, at the filming yeah. of Rocky, 59 and a half of filming Balboa. I don't understand how that's over the hill. I'm, right. I'm going to be 54 in two weeks. I don't understand this. It's not over the hill. No. <laughs> but I couldn't let this happen. I tried to call Antonio Tarver and he refused to pick up the phone. The only person I spoke with was his attorney who was adamant. I basically begged him and they would not yield four million dollars by tomorrow or there's no deal. No Rocky. Again, another super major crossroads in my life. I'll continue on with this epic betrayal a little later on. I think this will leave your listeners on a cliffhanger. So I think once we get Sly on the show, I may ask him if he feels comfortable picking up at this point and maybe yeah. you guys can hear it right from the horse's mouth as right. it were. Right. Um, so I wrote several responses to that, uh, jaw-dropping responses. Um, many of the words I wrote, Sly, I can't really read here because <laughs> we hope this is a family show. <laughs> um, so I had sent Sly a picture. It was a very unique picture, one I had in my archives of him literally with his fist in his arms over the Rocky statue's feet. He had the hat on. It was clearly during filming a Rocky Five. And I, I had sent that to him and I, I was pretty sure it was Rocky five, but I, I was just looking for some confirmation because I was going to write a story about it. And uh, Sly wrote me back and he, and this is what he said. I believe this was during Rocky five. <laughs> this one I let slip away, but ironically uh, this, 
I was angry. I, I had annoyed and angered myself for not taking charge in what ultimately led to doing, but it ultimately led to doing Rocky Balboa, which is a, which of course was a surprise. I'm sorry. Sly talks a lot with the voice messaging and sometimes right. the voice messaging puts in opposite words. Okay. Right, right. So, um, boom, boom, boom. Okay. <laughs> I have a note here off the record. Uh, <laughs> For okay. now. <laughs> uh, yeah, for now. <laughs> for now until Sly starts talking. Yeah. Um, so Sly mentions about the producer and sons who many years ago, unbeknownst to Sly, acquired, uh, which is unbelievable, the blocking rights. So he controls everything, and I basically control nothing. Now, I want to, as quickly as I can, try to find what, Sly said about his lawyer at the time. Uh, the producer accomplished stealing basically the power of the franchise away from me. And he even used my attorney. I had no idea that he was handling both of us and basically throwing me under the bus in favor of the producer. I suppose he imagined that I would not be around since everyone predicted the movie would be a joke. The second feature in the drive-in and that would be it. So him getting the race was the probably a, a, the yeah. rights, the rights. Thank you. So him probably getting the rights was probably a pretty easy task because back then the studios are giving away the rights to everything. Meaning if you were an influential actor, you could ask for the rights to the music score, to TV shows, to toys, to merchandising, clothing, you name it today. That is untouchable, but the producer has lived his entire life and his children and their children on my friend's back. Meaning Rocky. Exactly. Right. The only person that despises me more is the producer's wife. She hates the fact that everyone in her family, her children included, have been living off of my work. They have not accomplished anything. These children are in their 50s and have never had a job other than siphoning off my creative blood. Just a footnote, when Jason Statham was doing The Mechanic 2, he hated the producer and his son, A, so much they were so friggin' annoying, constantly telling him how he should act, etc. Then he threw them off the set permanently. Wow. So all these messages were coming at me over an eight-hour period. Mm -hmm. I couldn't think straight reading them because I thought everyone understood the value and the beauty of Rocky. I th I I thought that that was it. But yeah. there's such a deep, dark side to this Hollywood business. And and for for Sly to stay quiet for so long, for him to voice what he's doing now, that just tells me there's just an incredible, painful hurt. Yeah. And he mm -hmm. just has to he's speaking his heart. He's speaking his truth. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know where it's going to end, how it's going to end. Mm -hmm. But uh, I I've said this before. I say it again. I am forever Team Sly. Team and I, Sly. Team yeah. Sly. 100%. But mm -hmm. we will never, ever change uh, our footing. Yeah. Um, I will, uh, I'll go to the mattresses for Sly on this. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I'll say it again. I can't get over the conflict of interest with his lawyer. It doesn't count for anything. And I, um, I don't know. You know, it's, it's the courtroom scene. You have the opportunity to leave on the table what's right. And, and this, this family, they're a bunch of parasites and they're not, yep. they're not doing what's right. Where is the protection for the creator in all of this? The creator has to have some rights. Yeah, I, I know. I, I, I'm speechless about the whole thing. The I, more I detail am, I'm learning. I am too. And Stacey, you and I have had maybe 12 million conversations <laughs> on right. phone, text, yeah. Zoom meetings you know how visceral I can get. Yeah. And I want to do that right now. Yeah. I want to unload so deeply, yeah. but I'm not going to, um, because this, this, it, it it's got to come from, this is Sly's story to tell. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll be here forever to support him. Yeah. I will, I will never forsake that, but, yeah. um, and I, I just, know that's a big part of his goal coming yeah. on here too, to, it is. Yeah. It is. And and I'm I'm uh, I can't wait until we get him on. Yeah. But we have the next best thing to <laughs> Sylvester Stallone. We, do. we have Sylvester Stallone's biggest 
fan, one of the most <laughs> wonderful people I have ever met. Stacy, <laughs> would you send one of our representatives down to the green room yes. to bring our guest on? Our guest, who is a female. It's been so long since we've yes. had a girl on, so I'm all excited. Hold on. Here girl she is. Power. Miss Stephanie. Yay. <laughs> Hi, honey. Yay. Hey, Mike. Hi, Stacy. Hello, Hello, my friend. Hello. You have no idea how excited I am and how emotional I feel. Really? Um, oh my gosh! I, I've, I've. This is like a dream. Oh, well, I'll I tell you what. <laughs> my when I, 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 Stephanie, you are so absolutely adorable. I remember coming in the afternoon to pick you and your family up for the tour and as i was driving up alongside i turned i took the left on the 12th and there's the reading market on one side and you are sitting on the wall with your family and you look i made eye contact with you for just a second before i came into traffic and i said they all have rocky shirts on she has a huge <laughs> smile on her face this is going to be a great tour because yeah. you stephanie are who i made this tour for for the love that you show during the tour, your whole life for Rocky, you are who I made this tour for. Welcome to our little podcast. And thank you for hanging in there until we got done talking. Oh about my gosh. Episode. Thank you so much for having me I, again. This is like a dream come true to sit with someone such as yourself, Mike, you've become, you know, a celebrity in my eyes. I think you're yeah. incredible what you do. And I'm so grateful <laughs> for what you do. Thank like, you. Being there in Philadelphia with you and, the stories and the information that I didn't know, the facts telling yeah. that you, the stories, the way you brought up pictures and helped us know exactly where you were talking about and what you were saying. My husband and I talked about it after, and it was it was a dream come true for me to be there and stand stand in the same spot that Sly stood. Oh, and, I get that. Like it's so overwhelming to me. Yeah, such a huge inspiration in my life and he's got me through some really difficult times with yeah. his brilliant writing and his quotes and yeah i just i just love him so much and you brought him to life and i just i'm so grateful you know when when i die i'm going to be remembering some of the things in my life what you say and how you were on the tour will be one of the highlights flashing before my eyes <laughs> as i kick it off this planet <laughs> I'm glad well, to hear that. <laughs> before I get into real depth here, and Stacy and I ask you a bunch, a bunch of questions, I want to talk about your husband. Jay was his name, right? Yep. Yeah, Jay. I want to talk about Jay because Jay reminded me of my wife, Sue. You know, people like us, we are, the three of us are serious, thick, involved fans. It's yeah. like... If Rocky was a bowl of spaghetti with a mass amount of sauce in it and we took our arms and our hands and we put our hands and the spaghetti drips down and all the sauce and we just hold it and we fling it off around the world around us. That's what we are flinging our love for Rocky all over yep. the place. Wow. That's how I, I see that. that's us. creative. <laughs> Great description. That's, that's how I see us. I'm like, oh, yeah, you got a problem, Rocky? Well, poof, you have <laughs> big spaghetti on your face. Take that. <laughs> Don't watch your Irish. Now you're Italian. You okay? I watched Jay support you, videotape you, oh. take pictures with you and the kids. I watched that, and it reminded me of my first time in Kensington at Rocky's apartment at Mighty Mix Gym, uh, at the, wherever I go in the city. I, it, the first time I was there, I experienced a lot of these firsts with Sue, and she was there because I'm out of it. I was a lot like you. I was very yeah. emotional. I, there were highs and lows. I, I was thinking of all my successes, my failures, and how Rocky was there. And she, I, I almost couldn't even, I wasn't even in my body in that moment. It was an out of body experience. Yes. I agree. I agree. Yeah. And so now she had those pictures for me. I was able to relive that moment coherently. Yes. <laughs> okay. It's and so and overwhelming Jay did that at the time. It's yeah. so overwhelming at the time that it's almost like, it's like a dream. So when, I, when it was over, I was like, Oh gosh. Well, I remember in having yeah. that video yeah. and that those those pictures and everything he did with the the GoPro, it's it's so special to have that and have that memory. 
Yeah, and I got I got to get my hands on that because I want to get Jay back on here and I want to talk to him about that. I would be very very interested to see, once we talk to you, you know, in a couple of weeks or a month or whatever, I'd like to talk to Jay and get his thoughts on what it's like living with a Rocky fan because sure. I think I think Good one. because remember Stacy, you know we we Great we, idea. Of, yeah. we often think about, you know, when you're giving care to an elderly person <laughs> in your family and, and the person's, you know, they're dying from cancer, emphysema or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And, and you're like, oh, I'm so sorry for your, you know, you're going to be going through this. But nobody thinks about the caregiver. Right. So, you know, you two have husbands and I have Sue. Nobody thinks about them and what it's like to deal with us. And <laughs> we we are in this vortex of Rocky. So Good I think that'd be very interesting. Yeah. All right. He'd love that. Yeah, you got to send me the video, too. We can pop that in here. Please send that video. Yeah. Absolutely. So before I turn it over to Stacey for questions, I want to ask you, Steph, what is it about Rocky? Why do you love this character so deeply? (sighs) You know, he... From his first Rocky movie to Rocky Balboa, he has gone through so many ups and downs throughout his life. Mm. And I personally can relate to that, especially with the fitness aspect. Mm. What he does with his body throughout all the movies has always been a source of inspiration for me. And... Aside from just that, I struggle myself with an eating disorder and I fluctuate with my weight immensely, like Mm -hmm. not just 15, 20 pounds, like 60, 80 pounds I lose every year. And whenever I would get so low about how I looked when I was up as in in weight, I would Mm -hmm. always think of how Rocky would always be down. And it's, it's, it's like, it ain't about how hard you get hit. It's about how hard you get hit and keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. And every time I get hit with this weight gain, I just have to remind myself that you can break through this and yeah. you can get to where you, that healthy weight again. And I'm mm-hmm. like a sicko. I want to look like Rocky. I want the muscle. I never want to be a skinny girl. I always wanted the muscle. Right. I used to steal my brother's muscle magazines. And it was wow. right around the time I discovered Rocky because I yeah. was, wasn't was even born when he was when he started back in 1976. Wow. You know, I think Rocky three was out in 82. I was two years old, but I was old enough to really watch Rocky four. Yeah. And that was when obviously he fought the Russian and he was ripped and he was, oh my gosh, the training yeah. session and that the scene that where he's training in the barn and it's, um, you know, it's mind blowing. And he just, to answer your question, I'm sorry if I'm beating around the bush. No, I, please. I just respect the character he created as this person who could be so down in the dumps and keep moving on. And no matter what happened, you know, just like in, in, in Rocky five, when they lost all their money, you know, yeah. they, he just, he persevered and, and perseverance is, is so key in having a good, healthy, long life and a good relationship with food and all of that. And I just, I turn to him every time I need help getting out of the dumps. I turn to him. I turn to his character. I turn to his his Facebook page. I, I listen to. He's such a brilliant man. On top of just the character he's created for all of us, he's just he's he's my favorite person on the whole planet. That's not related to me. That's <laughs> what it boils down to. I right. Just, I love him so much as a human being and as a character. <laughs> Stacy, but uh, I, why don't you throw in some thoughts here? Because yeah. as as a uh, part of the female species, yes, uh, I think you can relate. So why don't you yes. have at it before I start monopolizing the conversation again? <laughs> so, Steph, you and I are the same person. Oh my gosh, really? Inten- oh, just I just love the intensity, and I love the sincerity, and and I get it because you know people who aren't quite as covered in spaghetti sauce as we are. <laughs> As much, much, you know, you know, people are like everyone loves Rocky. You know what I'm saying? I've never met a human. Oh yeah, that everybody I talk to, they're like, oh yeah, I love Rocky. I'm like, no, right. you don't. 
Dan. No, I you don't understand, right? Rocky. <laughs> I'd hide the bodies for Rocky. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'd hide the bodies. So that I just, I just love. And we have so many men on here. So it's so, and 80% of our audience is men. So it's so nice to have a woman on here oh, yeah. who, who's oh, sure. as crazy as I am. And I, I mean that in the best possible way. You're just, you're adorable. Um, you sent me a bunch of pictures and, and, you know, you mentioned your food struggle and I, if it's okay with you, do you mind if I show those photos? No. Not at all. Not because at all. this to me, this, hold on. Look at this. I'm right. like, wow. Talk about, you know what I mean? And warrior. And to that yeah. journey, and look at this one. That journey to the bicep. To, that bicep yeah. is bigger than my bicep. <laughs> just just love it. And where's uh this this right here? Super impressive. Look at her. Amazing. Now that talk about Rocky inspiration. Are you kidding totally. me? You know what I mean? Yeah. That That is, it's unbelievable. And you should be so proud of yourself. And I know it's frustrating. I mean, I have my own food issues too. I've mentioned them in the past. It does, it takes up so much space in your, your mind. So I right. do understand that. Um, and, and if you've done that once, I did you've this mentioned, is, like, done it many times. What I do. It's just getting yeah. that motivation. And yesterday Rocky was on, it was a marathon. <laughs> yes. We all laid on the couch, the whole family, and we watched them all. And it was like, all right, Monday, gonna Monday. start eating good, hitting the gym, got my Rocky brain going. And yeah, no, it's it really, it's such a motivator. He is yeah. just such a motivator. Yeah. Well, you've proven you can do it many times. And so you'll get there again. And I just, yeah, I, I'm, I'm wildly impressed with people who have a big, you know, all that kind of success from those before and after pictures never yeah. get old. So. Yeah, you'll do I know. It again, I know. Sure. They're fun to look at and they're it's just a reminder that I can do it and mm. again, I could not have done it without having that yeah. rocky mindset. Yeah. Without, well, you know, a, go ahead. Mike. Stephanie, I, I got to tell you, what what's impressive about the before and after pictures is that when I, I we all have before and after pictures and like when I look at my after pictures, I go back to the before pictures I go, "Hey, you're better there." <laughs> <laughs> like, it's it's hard, man. It's so hard. You hit your mid fifties, and your body just says, "You know what, fool? It, no, don't worry about it. Just go for the cheesesteak. Go for the pizza. Go for the hot wings. I know. Go for I the French it. fries. Go for the double whopper with bacon and extra mayo. Okay? It's not. It's easy. so easy to. It's so easy. Yeah. To. That's, you know, that's yeah. the the easy go tos, but. You know, I, you, I can only imagine what Sly would eat while training for his movies. Mm. Like, that would be a question I would like to ask him. I'd like a copy of your diet. because a fistful of rice? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he literally would have a fistful of rice and, like, broiled chicken or fish. Yeah, I was going to say, he was all protein, mostly protein. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. That's it. A little bit of, yeah, that's a little a lot little of, bit of rice. It yeah. is. It's, it's a lot of preparation. Yeah. So... I remember the reaction you had when we parked and we got out. We took a look at Mighty Mix Gym, and I was pointing out that this is the street where Rocky and Tommy Gunn had the big fight. The pet shop was over there, and back of us, of course, was yep. the Andy Andy's Bar. Okay, you had yep. a very beautiful reaction. You just you you welled up with tears. You got emotional, but you weren't babbling like a fool. You 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 were no, so I was taking it in. You were taking it in. You really, you were very present. I felt you were very present. Just tell me a little bit about what that was like when you saw the gym and you're standing there. It was, it was unbelievable. I know that word is so overused, but it was just, I, I it's, it sounds so dramatic, but it, there's no other way to describe it. I felt like I am breathing the same air that yeah. Stallone yeah. breathed. You right. know, like standing on that step and looking up at that. I've seen the movies a gazillion times. And I saw him step up onto that step and open that gym door so many times. And I was standing there. I was standing where his feet were, were. the air that he breathed. And it was just <laughs> so mind-blowing to me. And I just felt nothing but gratefulness because not only was I there physically, I had the world's best impersonator 
you know, hosting <laughs> us and, 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 and sharing this tour with us. Mm. It just, it was, I, I just said there, it's hard to describe in words, but as far as to you. really answer it, I was breathing the same air as him and I was standing in the same place his feet were. And that was just it's like sacred list. ground. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Now, when you get to the Rocky sacred steps, ground. you get to the Rocky steps. What's that journey up the steps like? <laughs> I, I know, love, right? I love her so much. I know. Well, it's I, know. I begged you. I begged you to do it with me, and you couldn't. Right. I was like, I right. want Mike to do it with me. I have and to stay you, with the car because the cops will arrest me. Said, I can't leave the car. Yeah. You're, I can't leave the car. I know. But you know what? It was. I was almost better that I did it myself because I too. it was such – Talk about out of body experience. Yeah, yeah. Like Jay was running, and this was the support. You know what you said about Jay. He was right. running up the steps sideways, bless his heart, with the GoPro, filming me all the while. Every step I took, I just cried my eyes out because again, wow. it's such a monumental moment in all the movies that I'm doing something that I've wanted to do since I was ten years old. Like I am actually physically there where yeah. he had such a difficult moment when he had got that, that stitch in his side and he felt like a failure yeah. because he couldn't make it up the steps after his long run. And, and the, so many times where he did run up, whether it be by himself and he's, you know, got his hands up or when he ran up with his son, the kid, you know, yeah. or, or whatever, he ran up those steps so many times and it was just like, Oh my God, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And then when I got to the top, it hit me and I, I'm, I'm lucky I didn't damn near collapse because it was very, it was like, yeah. a, I don't even know. It's, it's like something came over me. It was just, I felt like I changed in some silly way. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds so ridiculous and I've told no, this so many no. times and everyone's just it like, doesn't. yeah, okay. But <laughs> I felt, I felt, I felt him there and maybe yeah. it just felt like he was there with me and mm -hmm. I just cried and cried and all the people that were standing around were staring at me and i'm like these people probably think i just beat cancer or something and <laughs> yeah right like right sure celebration. no it was celebrating that i am in the same location as sly stallone my hero my my guy I just yeah, yeah. it was right, it was amazing right. do you collect anything do you have any do you have like any magazines you've he held over from when you were a kid do you have any posters that you're very proud of or any figures anything at all have you collected anything over the years of rocky um so i have a gym in my house and my husband surprised me when i had lost 80 pounds i was working out in this dingy room extra room of ours had brown shag carpet it was gross well our house was built in the 80s so you know it's just one of those things it yeah. was just really not the most enjoyable place to be and then one day i came home from work and he was in there and he wouldn't let me come in the gym and i was like what are you doing and he's like just give me a couple seconds and next thing I know, he's like, are you ready? And I'm like, yeah, ready for what? I open the door and he's got the music playing. No. And you walk into this beautifully done gym with canvas pictures of Rocky at his most oh. vulnerable moments. Right. Look at Throughout that. Huh? Whole, every wall, every wall has these canvas pictures of rock. And nice. all of my favorite scenes, and it just and the, and as you can see in the mirror, it's got my all time favorite quote. This is the tattoo I'll be getting with Rocky with this. This is the <laughs> tattoo I'm going to get on my arm. It's right. got the whole quote that he, you know that he said to the kid. Yeah, and of course. Hand up, you know, right up in the sky. Um, it was amazing, and all the while, like I said, he nice. had the music playing, and I just stood in there like I can't believe you did this. Like this, talk about motivating me to get that talk about right. husband points, <laughs> big husband points. Hey, that's called husband bank. You <laughs> put just, that in the bank. It was the nicest thing. Yeah, it was the nicest oh. thing he's ever done for me. Uh, it was the most thoughtful, nicest thing he's yeah. ever done in the twenty-one years we've been together, because oh. he knew how, uh, how much it means to me. I really liked uh, hanging with Jay. I I liked him. 
I really did. I, I uh, again, I, I compare him to Sue, and I, I really saw quite a lot of her and him. In, in just, there was a patience about him. There was a wanting to make sure he got it right for you. Yeah, he got it from. I remember him moving different angles. I was, I was focused on you. You and I were locked eyes. Okay, and my peripheral, I, I saw. Uh, I'm oh, sorry. That was my doctor's office calling. Sorry. <laughs> you didn't hear that. Did you <laughs> stupid phone went off? I had, I had been focused on you and I would see him in the peripheral. Just we're going back and I watched him move, just trying to get everything right for you. And, and that is really, that's a beautiful thing. You can't almost, you can't even really put that into words. Yeah. That that's just, it's just something unquantifiable, I think, in a marriage. And um, I, I saw that. So I just wanted to let you know that it's uh, beautiful. Yeah, it's, Some of his, he's uh... very supportive. And he'll yeah. be happy to hear that. And he's a videographer. So yeah. he knows how he wants things to look. And I know right. he had a vision of how he wants to finish the video. So yeah. once right. that's all, all complete, I'll definitely uh, send that to here's, you. Here's a couple uh, pictures that you sent me as well. Look at him. Ah, look at that guy. Nice. And here, I just wanted to get these in. Oh, look at that. Yep. I believe that's where this the, um, the statue originally was. Yeah, the statue would have been about 14 feet in back of that. Look at that. Okay. I, I, can't, I barely can lift the remote, the TV remote. What, what is that, like 300 pounds? That's insane. <laughs> oh, there's the family. Look at that. Now, you had a couple, what, neighborhood friends with the kids? Yep, we had the kids each bring um, one of their friends, and gotcha. they weren't uh, well versed in Rocky, but my kids are. That's that's part of their um, their childhood was learning and and enjoying and you know understanding who yeah. Rocky is as a character and how much it's yeah. you know changed their life. Oh my gosh, I whenever my son or my daughter has something. I'm like, my daughter's in um, cross country. So when, before she goes on a, on a run to race, I'm always like, eye of the tiger. Eye of the tiger. If you start right. getting and losing steam, you just got to repeat it over and over head, over and over in your head. Just, it's true. just keep saying it, Mia. It's going to set you off and you're going to fly. And she's like, okay, mom. Okay. They both, they both really appreciate Rocky. They, they watch the Rambos with me. They watch everything. All I yeah. have to do is show them the movies. And right, and when right. sometimes if we're just the TV's on, it'll come on. I'll look at Mia and I'll be like, Mia, which Rocky is it? She'll be like three. Mm. I'm like, that's yeah, my yeah, girl. Yeah. That's my girl. <laughs> She'll know exactly nice. which Rocky it is. I'm like, that's my girl. She nice. Stacy, <laughs> before we get Stephanie out of here, is there anything you want to say or ask her? Yeah, you know, um, it's rare that I have a female on here. And so what I wanted to ask you, I know when I'm speaking with my girlfriends or my daughter, um, I've referenced Rocky and Adrian specifically as examples of how to treat each other. And I have a meme. I'll put it in right here. I made, I created this years ago, but it says, girl, would Rocky ever treat Adrian like that? And to me, that's a great barometer of respect. You know what I mean? Like if, if you're dating a guy or you could put it in reverse, if a guy's dating a woman, would Adrian ever treat Rocky like that? If the answer is no, you don't, you're not with the right person. Yeah. And so I've said that to my daughter, would, would Rocky love it. ever treat Adrian yep. like that? If the answer is no, we're done here. And so, and I've said that to my girlfriends yep. who are in difficult relationships. I, I didn't know if with your daughter, maybe did you do the same thing? <laughs> you know, my daughter's only 12, so we're not at the point yet where she's oh. dating. <laughs> well, then there's my advice. <laughs> like, I totally see where you're going with that. I totally get it because I look at Rocky and the way he treated Adrian was with such respect and, and he was such... A gentleman for someone who was not a gentleman, you know, he's not yeah. like a gentleman yeah. as yeah. far as gentlemen are seen, but he respected her and, and cared so deeply about her 
that it showed in everything. Like even the silliest things like, here's your prize. Open your prize. Like your prize. using terminology like prize rather than present. He just I know. made everything so special. And I love that you do that. And that's, you know, I, I that's something to think about. Like Mia, does he treat you like Rocky? If he doesn't yeah. treat you like Rocky, he's not, yeah. he's not worth it. So yeah. I totally and, get where you're coming from. Yeah. And there's Jay yeah. standing behind the guy in the car with a golf club. And he's <laughs> right. oh, treat her like Rocky would, huh? Yep. <laughs> Boom, off with his head. <laughs> Stephanie, I'll you have head. been, uh, yeah, you've been just, I don't know, Mike, do you have any other questions? I could talk to her all day. I think we're going to be talking more often, you and I. Yeah. <laughs> and we definitely got to have her back on because I, I am always interested in hearing on the partner's um, perspective on how it affects them. That's a big deal because when yeah. you have such a, a beautiful, thick passion for mm. something, whether it be crocheting, video games, right, training, Rocky, whatever, there there is an opposite effect to that. And I love hearing sure. how everyone works towards a common goal of making it so beautiful and perfect. So that's in the future. And my last question that I ask everyone <laughs> that I think is so brilliant, if I may pat myself on the back, <laughs> Stephanie, if you had 30 seconds in an elevator with Sylvester Stallone, what would you tell him? Go. I would say I would tell him how much he's changed my life. I would tell him how much I love him and how much. Oh, my gosh, this is so hard. Um, I would just tell him he's changed my life and I would ask him to be my friend. I would say, could you just be my friend? Like I offered my money to, to call him. I want to talk to him so bad. Like I have friends that feel deep in their heart that I'm going to meet him someday. But that's right. besides the point. I would just tell him how much his brilliant writing has changed my life and influenced my life. And that it would mean so much if like I could get his phone number and I could just call him once. <laughs> <laughs> right? I, know, I can't help it, but like that's seriously, I'd be like, can we be friends? Right? I, your friends. I, I get it. One hundred percent. I get it. I don't know. That's I, funny. It's, it's, it's a tough question. That's a really hard. It question. is. It is. It's not easy. It, 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 it isn't an easy question. And I always wonder, like it. It's that elevator pitch. You know, you, you've you got somebody. Mm. I got that idea because somebody was talking about being in an elevator with Steven Spielberg going f like three floors. And it was literally like 30 seconds. And I thought, man, what would people say if they had 30 seconds in an elevator with Stallone? Because that can happen. We've had two guests two, who have right. been in an elevator with Sylvester Stallone. And so, you know, you just you don't know that that can ever happen. And, uh, and, and I was just interested to see right. what road people would go down. And I know I would never hold you to that. Hmm. Sure. No. And I'm a singer. I think I told you, Mike, that I'm a singer. Yeah. And you know, yeah. one thing I would ask him, I would say, what is your favorite song? And I would record it for him. Oh, and then know. I would send oh. the song to him and then he'd have to be my friend because I didn't. He'd have to be. Job. Right. Perfect plan. <laughs> I can't I can try think. try to influence him that way. Why not? Why? <laughs> I, I, I Listen, that's the best plan I can come up with. I like that. I love it. Stephanie, you have been one of our favorite guests. You have so much heart and passion. Thank you for taking time out of your busy day to sit with us and chat, Rocky. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. You're, you are so welcome. Thank you so much for, for thinking I was worthy to be on this show. Oh, and totally. Easy. And to just, Easy. I just, I'm so... I'm so humbled and, and touched and, and so grateful. I'm so grateful to know you, Mike. Like I said, Stephanie, I wanted to keep it touch you. with you. I think you are sure. amazing. Thank you very I much. I, I think you're I, amazing. I want you to say a prayer for my hair because I'm going to go <laughs> now and I'm going to try to fix my head. I don't know what happened today, but we had a death and it's my hair. So I'm going to go try to fix good. that. No, no, no. It looks horrible. It's okay. I'm going to try to fix it before Sue gets home so she doesn't laugh her way into the bedroom and go to bed early. Okay? You know what I'm saying? All right.
great. I think you look great. <laughs> Thank you, Stephanie. Listen, we will have you back soon, okay? So don't go anywhere. <laughs> Keep punching. Right, Bye, Steph. Keep so punching. Bye. Much love, honey. Keep punching. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> you see? You know, we right again. In, yeah, I know. <laughs> right I mean, again. We we live in such crazy times. There's so many negative things going on. And when I get to spend three and a half hours with someone like Stephanie, it makes it rejuvenates me. Yeah. It she is just very bubbly, very positive. I enjoyed our tour so much. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just glad she wanted to come on the show. I'm yeah, glad. Well, I, I'm sure you loved her tour because her passion for it matches you. Oh. you know what I'm saying the emotional, you know, impact yeah. that it has that that it matches all of us here in this bubble. So I just I loved listening to her because it's like, oh, another human that gets it. Yes, <laughs> that can rise to our level of a level. <laughs> so no, she was she was just so it's sweet great. and i just yeah she's awesome loved, loved having her on so where do, you, where do you meet her husband i i, I think he's going to be very very interesting yeah. um to uh to chat with but yeah um, that's a great idea yeah so yeah, we'll have yeah. to circle back on that for sure for sure so stacy we are uh just about to get uh out of here i have mm -hmm paramedics uh standing by to resuscitate my hair with scissors I, I, with scissors and, a, <laughs> and a, a rare comb that has been brought in from it, it reportedly was gandhi's comb before he went bald so i don't oh. know if that's good or bad uh so we're just gonna see if we can do something with this the creativity today i have to say is off the chart <laughs> But I got to tell you, um, for my father who's watching, since we're on the hair thing, I yeah. got to tell you, the guy is like, I think he's closing in on, he's going to be 78, I think, on his next birthday. Aww. I mean, 78, right? Like, and he still has, he keeps his hair really tight. Mm -hmm. And he does he does have a, a widow's peak, as they used to, they call yeah. it, you know. But dad still has like a lot of hair he could still grow his hair pretty thick he could wow. get it like mine but you know he just keeps it short he goes ah, i'm retired i don't need to worry about the hair mike <laughs> and i go okay whatever i love your dad yeah oh, no he's a trip he's a trip i hope i hope to get to see him soon i was gonna go in this weekend but it's gonna be like 98 degrees and they don't have ac Ooh. so I, i'm like a little baby I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I have to be home. I, I've got to be in my house where, you know, mm. we cuddle up with, you know, penguins and polar bears. <laughs> I can't take the heat, but mom, dad, I'll be in soon. I promise. Uh, <laughs> anyways, before we get the hell out of here, uh, Stacy, what, what's left to talk about that we haven't uncovered so far? Um, we're good. <laughs> I, think we're... I don't have anything. I don't have anything, you know, uh, you, to be continued on, on Sly's post. We'll yeah, revisit yeah. that as they happen. And uh, I have a feeling they're going to be happening more and more. Yeah. 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 And more to more to come. And I, I just I, I hope something can be resolved of it. So he doesn't do have too. to feel this this upset. It's very it's, it's upsetting lot. to me to see him that upset. It's a so. lot to carry around. Yeah. Stacey, do you have any um, uh, where can people find you? <laughs> People can find me at had me at yo on Instagram and on Wonderful. Facebook, uh, the Rocky Files podcast, and on Instagram, the Rocky Files. And Mike, what um, about you? You can go to a bunch of those places and connect with me too, or you can find me at the Yo Philly Rocky Film Tour. And if you are looking for a Christmas gift, something, if you have a reader in your life, I wrote a book called Cue the Rocky Music. It fits in the stocking, and there Miss Stacy is holding it. It's only about 250 pages, a lot of small words, nothing extravagant. <laughs> Buy it for the Rocky lover reader in your life. Trust me, you enjoy it. Stacy, thank you. For, oh, the pretender, yes, <laughs> Mr. Jim Toscano and Danny Janino. Janino is it Janino? I think it is. <laughs> Danny, Danny G I always say Danny's last name wrong. <laughs> Danny Jim Toscano was the director of the pretender, and his work partner was Danny Janino. I'm almost positive that is the right word. Anyways, Danny, if I said it wrong, sorry. Stacy, <laughs> we have murdered this episode. <laughs> yes, we, we have. have. We have stuck a knife in it. It's done. <laughs> There's nothing. <laughs> Shower scene. Psycho. That's right.
There's nothing left to say. Um, I missed you last week. I'm Aww. so glad we're here. Yeah. Um, I don't like going more than a week uh, without <laughs> uh, catching up with you. So um, oh, until next you. week. Until next week. Keep punching. Keep punching, everybody. Yeah.